I'm Charles Bankhead, reporting for MedPage today from the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. Increasing the dose of the anti-estrogen agent fulvestrant led to a small but statistically significant increase in time to progression for patients with advanced breast cancer. At a press briefing, Dr. Angelo DeLeo of Hospital Prato in Italy described the study and its key findings. So this was a classic phase three clinical trial in which patients were randomly assigned to one of the two treatment groups, the so-called standard arm, in which patients received the fulvestrant at the dose of 250 milligrams, and the experimental arm, in which patients received the same agent but at the dose of 500 milligrams. The trial was focusing on patients with postmenopausal advanced breast cancer, and of course, an important uh, element was that the tumor had to, to have the estrogen receptor, because uh, it's quite obvious that if the tumor doesn't have the estrogen receptor, this tumor is not uh, a good candidate for treatment uh, with hormonotherapy, and uh, more specifically with fluvestone. These are the results, the, 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 the main results, because the primary endpoint of the study was to compare the two treatment groups in terms of time to progression. I'm not sure if you're familiar with time to progression, but time to progression means the time elapsing between the date you start the treatment and the date the disease progress. So here we have the comparison in times to progression between the two treatment arms. The blue curve corresponds to patients who receive the 500 milligrams, and the yellow one corresponds to patients who receive the 250 milligrams. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's clear that 500 milligrams is more effective than 250 in prolonging time to progression. Um, and the, the, the median time to progression is reported in the upper part of the slide. So 6.5 months was the median time to progression for 500 milligrams versus 5.5 for 250. Uh, we analyzed the additional parameters, uh, objective response rate and clinical benefit rate. So objective response rate is basically uh, a measure for evaluating how much uh, the tumor has a shrinkage under the effect of a, of a given treatment. Clinical benefit rate is a more extensive evaluation because it doesn't take into account also only the patients who have the tumor shrinkage, but takes into account also patients who have disease stabilization for at least six months. And when you, when you look at these results, you realize that uh, uh, there is no difference between the two treatment arms in terms of objective response rate. So the probability of observing tumor shrink shrinkage is pretty the same in the two study arms. And the same conclusion has to be, has to be drawn for the clinical benefit rate. Although uh, uh, there is the impression, there is a numerical increase in clinical benefit rate for patients who have the 500 milligrams. Overall survival did not differ after 50% of the anticipated deaths had occurred. A second pre-specified analysis after 75% of the events probably will occur during 2010, he said. In an interview with MedPage Today, Dr. DeLeo summarized the key points that physicians should take from the study. Well, I think the key message is that now we have a new dose for this drug because uh, the study has shown uh, clearly that if you increase the dose of fulvestrant to 500 milligrams, you improve the time to progression. That is an important clinical endpoint end point for breast cancer patients because it's the time during which patients will be free of disease progression. And that's, of course, clinically important. And not only clinically, but also psychologically for the patient because the idea of changing the treatment at a given time is extremely disturbing. It gives you the idea that the disease is not controlled. So that's an important uh, piece of information, improving time to progression. And the, the good news is that you can improve this time to progression, increasing the dose without increasing the toxicity. Because the 500 milligrams gives a toxicity profile that is completely uh, super impossible with the toxicity profile of the 250 milligrams. With the only exception, of course, that for delivering 500 milligrams, the patient has to receive two intramuscular injections at the same time instead of just one. There is no way, for technical reasons, because the drug uh, cannot be diluted so easily, there is no way to concentrate the 500 milligrams in the same 5, 5 ml volume that is used for the 250 milligrams. From the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, I'm Charles Bankhead, MedPage Today.